in this section, we're going to start taking a look at some more advanced properties of inverse trigonometric functions. And those properties are going to be what happens when we take the sine of the arc sine or the arc sine of the sine, et cetera. Okay. And also the cosine of the arc cos and the arc cos of the cos. All right. So there are domain restrictions on these. Okay. And also range restrictions. Now, remember, these are the domains and ranges. So we defined these in the first three videos in the section. Okay, so um, if you skip those, that's what we, well, in part, that's what we did there, just to make sure that we understood that these are the domains and ranges. So if we have an angle between negative pi halves and pi halves for y, and our x values between negative one and one, then these sine and arc sine will cancel each other out, and we'll just be left with x, okay? And then same thing with the arc sine and sine. So that's what we're really saying, is that these can cancel each other out if we're in the correct domain and we're in the correct range, okay? Now, if we're not, then we're going to have to make sure that our answer fits within the governed uh, range and domains of the arc functions. So let's see what that means. So we have cos minus one of cos of pi thirds. Now we look at the cosine function and we know that if the cosine of y is between zero and pi thirds, which it is, right? then we just cancel each other, these out, and we're just left with pi thirds, all right? But let's say we didn't know that. Well, what we could do is we could go into the unit circle, all right? And we could evaluate, first of all, the cos of pi thirds. So let's do that. This is, a, this is if you forget, like, these rules. This is a way to go back around it, okay? So we go into the unit circle. Remember, the cosine is the x-coordinate, okay? So the cos of pi thirds is the x-coordinate at pi thirds. So we go to pi thirds and the x-coordinate is one half, okay? So realistically, we could say that this is the same thing as the inverse cos of one half. And remember, the arc cosine function lives in quadrants one and two, okay? So remember, we talked about that in the previous videos with the arc cosine function. And so we would go to quadrant one and two and we'd say, okay, well, there's some angle that cos minus one of one half is equal to, or the cos of theta is equal to one half at some angle. And in our unit circle, well, that angle is pi thirds. Okay, so remember we're in these two quadrants for a cosine function. Okay, so that's going to be equal to pi thirds. Okay, so the answer to this is simply going to be pi thirds. Okay, so I just showed you the short way and the long way of doing this. Okay, since it's within the domain. The sine and the cosine, we can't, the, part, the cos and the net arc cos would cancel each other out, and you'd be left with pi thirds because it's within the domain. Okay, now another thing you can do is use your calculator. Okay, so on our calculator, we could say, just to check the answer, okay, um, so you could say arc cos of the cos of pi thirds. Okay, and then what you also would want to do is you'd want to type in pi thirds. And I want you to notice that these two are the exact same thing for the approximations, okay? So that's how you can check your answer to make sure you're right with this, okay? That doesn't mean that, you know, during an examination, you just use your calculator, okay? You might have to be able to justify it as well. Now, this is a trick. This was a tricky one because this is what a lot of students will do is they'll cancel these out and they'll get five pi six, okay? And unfortunately, that is not the correct answer for this, okay? So um, so let's go through and tr just try this the long way just to make sure that we understand how to do this, okay? So um, what we would do is first, we would look up sine of five pi six in our, in our graphing, or unit circle, excuse me, okay? Remember, the sine function is the y coordinate. So we go to five pi six, we go to the y coordinate and it's one half, okay? So really what we're looking for is the arc sine of one half. Now we have to remember that the arc sine function lives only in quadrants one and four, okay? So we can't use quadrant number two or three anymore, okay? So we go here and we're looking for the y coordinate that has a one half, right? And so that's going to be pi six, right? So that's a way to check to make sure that we've done this correctly. Of course, we can use our calculator, verify this. Okay, so the answer should be the same as pi six when we type in arc sine, sine five pi six. All right, so let's do that. 
So we're going to type in the arc sine of the sine of 5 pi over 6, right? And we get this number, 0.523, blah, 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 right? And then if we type in pi 6, we end up with the exact same number, okay? So again, that's how you want to check your answers, just to make sure that you've gotten this correct. Okay. All right, the inverse tan of the tangent of 2.153. Now remember, the arc tangent function has a domain of all real numbers, all right? And so this is one where we, if, if we go back up, okay, it says that the, now remember, we're trying to find the arc tan first. Okay, so the tan of the arc tan of x is true for all real numbers x. Okay, so for this one, we don't have to do any domain check. Okay, this is just 2.153. But of course, if we don't trust that, we go into our calculator, we take the tan of the arc tan of 2.153. And it doesn't really matter. Okay, if I could just type numbers, it's still going to be the same thing. But um, regardless, I think it was 2.153, all right? Um, and that's exactly what we got for the calculator is 2.153, okay? All right, um, sine of sine, inverse sine of sine of negative pi fourths, okay? And so for this one, what we would do is first we'd look up the sine of pot negative pi fourths, okay? So in our unit circle, okay, the arc sine of pi fourths, okay, now remember the trick that I showed you, um, just put a negative right here in front of the seven. Like you, you could just cross these out and that would be the same thing as like negative pi thirds, is five pi thirds. So right here, negative pi fourths, and remember the sine is negative root two over two, okay? So this would be sine minus one of negative root two over two. And remembering that the arc sine function lives in quadrants one and four, this time it just works out that if we go back to quadrant four, because remember we have a negative, okay, then it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be this negative pi fourths. Okay, so this is one where it was in the domain. But if you're not sure, you can always just use your graphing calculator and type this in. Okay, that's what I would urge you to do. So in your calculator, we're going to type in sine of arc sine of, or I'm sorry, arc sine of sine of pi fourths. So let's clear this out. And we would say arc sine of sine of negative pi fourths. Right? And then our answer that we got was negative pi fourths. Right? And so there are the same number again. Right? So that's a way to check. All right, the last one, or the second to last one we have here, arc sine of 1.3. Now, this doesn't make any sense because if you remember all the way back from the beginning, we said that if we wanted to take the arc sine of a number, like 1.3, well, we can't do that, okay? Because the arc sine has to be between negative one and positive one, okay? So this one does not exist. It's outside of the domain. But again, we could use our calculator, check it. And so we would get, uh, when we clear that, we would say the sine of the arc sine of 1.3 or negative 1.3. I can't remember if it's 1.3 or negative 1.3. It was positive, uh, but it doesn't matter. It's undefined, okay? All right, finally, we have this cos minus one of cos of five pi thirds. Let's look up cos of five pi thirds first, okay? And five pi thirds, is going to be all the way over here. Now, at, remember the cosine is the x coordinate. So this is going to be one half, okay? So realistically, this is the cos minus one of one half. Remember that the arc cosine function only lives in quadrants one and two, all right? So we'll cancel and get these out. And we're looking for the x coordinate that gives us a one half. Okay, so where is the x coordinate a half? It's right here at pi thirds. Okay, so this would be equal to pi over three. Um, one last time, if we don't trust our answer, we would go into our graphing calculator, make sure it's okay. 
So clearing this out, we would get cos minus 1 of the cos of 5 pi thirds. Right? That gives us 1.047. And then we just type in pi over 3. We'll clear that. So that would be uh, pi over 3. And there we are. Exact same number again. All right, so that's how we can go through and use these arc function of the original function or original function of the arc function, okay? Making sure they're in the domain, okay? So again, what I would do is go into the unit circle, maybe evaluate what's inside the parentheses first, and then try to go within the domain of the arc function, okay? All right, so in the next video, we're going to take this a step further, and what if we had different functions? What if we had like the sine of the arc cos or the arc tangent or even the arc secant or something of that nature? Okay, so we'll see that in our next video.